Hey there YouTube, welcome on back to Artichoke Dip. My name is Rob, Solo Tabletop Gamer. And in this video, I'm gonna get into Fantasy Flight games a little bit and what the future may hold and some things that may be out there you may not even know about yet. So stick around and uh, we're gonna dive into the realm of Runebound. But before I do, if you like this video, click the like button. It lets me know you like the content and I'll make more like it. And if you have not subscribed, you just stumbled upon my channel and you enjoy tabletop gaming, don't forget to click that subscribe button followed by the bell icon. And every time this ugly mug uploads a new video, you will hear about it. So lately, um, okay, up here, I guess I should just start out. It's been a while since I've made a video and summer is always touch and go with me um typically schedules are you know it's pretty busy um you know doing that balancing act of work family and then game time and on top of that it's uh, my favorite time of year which is summer and i really really enjoy to be outside when the weather is nice because we only get a few months of it here up in michigan where you can really be outside and enjoy the weather um, the way I like to enjoy it before it's just cold and rainy and then eventually just cold and snowy again and you're locked indoors and the games come out so but uh, you know it's a funny thing that has recently um, happened here and well it hasn't recently happened it's something that's been in the works for a while and if you're like me, you enjoy Fantasy Flight um, game products. They are excellent products. I've always found they're a very well balanced system of deck building, dice rolling, and um, overall just great games. I mean, Fantasy Flight games has always seems like it's been a one of the pillars of the tabletop gaming hobby and everything I've seen recently well Fantasy Flight Games no longer is they have a merger they laid off all their employees and they did a merger with Asmodee Games which is a French based game company they have their own line of tabletop games so you know I did not see any definite answers in the future will you know, we see a continuation of Runebound and Descent and Rune Wars and Fallout and the Star Wars X-Wings and everything else they have out there, will it still be available? And unfortunately, um, there's just no clear definite answer on that one. So I guess we'll find out uh, as time moves on, but the trend I am currently seeing um, is, well, everything's drying up and you're unable to get your hands on many Fantasy Flight products any longer. In my, my introduction to Fantasy Flight games was this one right here, Runebound. And I love Runebound. It is such a great game. Um, this is one me and my friend Lance played on Tabletop Simulator and it was just amazing um as a matter of fact you know playing the game online because lance is in texas and i'm up here in michigan but the way that the table was set up the overall graphics was just as if we were sitting at the table playing and it was just absolutely amazing um and it's the first time i actually played ruin bound with um, another person. I've always played the game solo. I got the solo variant built into my decks and everything I use with my game system. So, um, yeah, it was very interesting and um, loved it. Uh, loved the overall theme of Ruinbound and the Ruinbound universe of Terranoth, um, where this setting takes place. But then it was, he was telling me about another game. He really enjoyed, um, him and his son play it all the time, and it was Descent, but he's playing the first edition of Descent, which um, was an exuberant amount of money to get my hands on. And But then I found this one, Descent Journeys into the Dark, the second edition. And I was blown away as to 
how awesome of a game system this actually is. And Descent is basically a... How do I explain this? To the way that I perceive it, Ruinbound, you're given this huge map and it's this snapshot of the realm of Terranoth and your characters are moving across the board trying to um, finish these quests before the timer runs out but Descent is like a more refined snapshot of a specific area to where at that point you're using miniatures and uh, it's more of a miniature skirmish game in Terranoth rather than a more broad overview of Terranoth and quests, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense to you guys out there. It's the best way I can explain it. Um, anyways, ex another excellent game system, well balanced with the decks, dice rolling, miniatures, um, the overall miniature skirmish combat system and how it works is just awesome. Awesome. I mean, uh, after the first scenario, I was hooked to it. it. I was just like, wow, this is such an excellent game system. So it posed a question to me, well, I wonder how many expansions were made for this game. So I started looking into it and I quickly found, I'm like, well, wait a minute, expansions are all sold out, can't get expansions anymore. And the expansions that you can find are so ridiculously expensive that it's just like, there's no way I can justify uh, spending that amount of money on an expansion to get a few miniatures and some extra cards and a little bit more tiles. I'm like, this is not going to happen. Which took me down this rabbit hole of Fantasy Flight games. And that's when I had learned that during its peak, Fantasy Flight games, um, they were based out of Minnesota, if I am correct here. Um, not that it matters. But I want to say Minnesota for some reason. And they employed quite a few people. And then at that point, um, they laid off all their staff. And they did a merger with Asmodee Games. And, well, Asmodee, they have their entire game line. And what they're going to do with this, are we going to see Descent? Are we going to see Ruinbound or Ruin Wars or anything before the merger? Um... I haven't got a clear, definite answer on that one way or another, so I really don't know. But it was kind of sad to see that. It was very sad to see this great system, you know, at this point, fall into the archives of gaming and, um, you know, Especially because Ruinbound, I mean, I got a special place in my heart for Ruinbound. Artichoke loves Ruinbound. But as I did more research and I was looking at this, that's when I found something cool had come out of all of this. And something maybe a lot of people know about, and maybe I'm just now finding out. Or maybe it's something that was one of those hidden diamonds in the rough waiting to be discovered. And that is a game system called Genesis, which is a story-driven system based off your roles. And But before I even learned about Genesis, I saw this book and I picked it up. It's called The Realms of Terranoth. And The Realms of Terranoth is actually a campaign setting for the Genesis RPG system. Now, the Genesis RPG system, let me see if I can get that. You can see that picture right there. That's what their main core rule book looks like, which I'll do a more in depth analysis of that because I do have it on order along with the GM screen. And it's going to be towards the end of the month before I have my hands on a hard copy of it. But I am guessing it is a excellent game system because my friend Lance 
when I showed him this, his first reaction was like, whoa, where, where did you get that? And I explained it to him. He found a PDF, and um, he had fallen in love with it just immediately because he loves ruin bound of descent like I do or more so I should say because he's been playing descent a lot longer than I have and it was at that point that he uh, you know I explained to him hey it's a campaign setting for this game system called Genesis and he had downloaded that PDF and read it and contacted me this morning and said um, this is one of his top three games of all time from now on because he said it's such an excellent system the way it's well designed game and the cool part for me is it's like a breath of fresh air because going back to when I was a kid and I opened up that red box set and all those cool dice fell out of the basic D&D set and it was just like something you've never seen before. Genesis hosts its own dice set as well. And I am eager to find out what all these dice do and the symbols and everything else because it is just extremely reminiscent of Descent and um, which only piques my interest even more so but looking at the overview of Genesis what the Genesis game system is which is really cool so for those of you out there looking for a very versatile game system unlike um, what we've seen, you got D&D, &D, which is just well, basically D&D, &D, and if you wanted to play a sci-fi game, maybe you're going to look into Traveler, or um, Stars Without Numbers is another one RPG system out there, or if you wanted to play a dystopian type of RPG, you might look into Shadow Run or something of those lines, or Mutant Future. Genesis is designed as a game system to where here is the layout, here's how the system runs, here's how you make the characters, but it's split up into three different parts to where you can run any system you want and it shows you how to build them worlds and how to create them um, off of that. And it just so happens that Realms of Terranoth is a fantasy campaign system that they did with Fantasy Flight Games to put out there for their system. But here is the cool thing about it. This is what I love about this so much. So when you read the introduction and the fluff of this, it explains to you that this was a famous, a campaign setting designed with Genesis in mind. But the way that the encounters are described, set up with the geological locations of where you will in meet those encounters in the realm of Terranoth, it is easily adaptable to any RPG system you are currently using. So it's really cool how they set this book up and designed it. They're going to explain to you this realm and the myth behind it and everything that encompasses this realm that you're going to adventure in and here are the encounters but you don't have to use them out of this book you can as a matter of fact if you're using D D, you can at that point go to your monster manual and pull up all the stats for that encounter and use them with the current game system you are using and as we would expect of fantasy flight games the art is just absolutely wonderful and these books the layout of it the book is of just excellent quality this is a uh, stitch bound hardcover and you're going to be able to use this book over and over again without having to worry about wearing the book out um, like a lot of other RPGs that I have gotten to where you have the glued spine and after about the third to fourth time of opening up the book the pages start separating and falling apart on the book and yeah at that point you're kind of taping stuff back together and anyway but it was very interesting to see that Fantasy Flight Games did this that they had decided to take Ruinbound and actually open up the world of Terranoth and make a RPG out of it. And there's some differences between 
Terranoth and maybe perhaps like Forgotten Realms, the D and D, or I'm gonna say the D20 um, gaming altogether. And it's one of those things that I really do like about these types of RPG systems, to where instead of magic being this extremely common thing that everybody has access to and you have this unlimited amount of cantrips to where you can just, you know, pretty much cast them out like you're handing out candy. Um, Terranoth is a lot different and it explains in the story of their creation of this orb that was created by the most powerful magic user Terranoth had ever known. And when the orb was destroyed it was at that point that people no longer found magical attainable it was there was only it was actually became very rare i guess what i'm trying to say in a very small handful of people were actually able to access arcane magic but what wound up happening is the dragons as they came in scooped up chunks of these broken orb and broke them up even more and then scribing power ruins upon them and scattering them across Terranoth. So which gets into the whole thing of ruin bound because it's all about ruins. So these ruins that were inscribed on these crystal shards or orb shards, whatever you want to call them, have their own magical energy. Any ruined priest could learn how to use these to his advantage like a magic user. But still, magic is still a very um, dangerous prospect in Terranoth. So it's very cool. I love those type of game systems where you're weighing out the odds in the game system as to whether you should use magic or not because um, it's either going to help or hinder and you don't know until you roll the dice. <laughs> and normally by then it's too late. <laughs> so very, I'm looking forward to this um, quite a bit. I'm waiting to get in the Genesis system in. Um, I mean, I could sit down and roll up a system if I wanted to with D&D &D or another one of the systems I have and use this campaign setting for it, but I thought, well, instead of doing that, why don't I use the Genesis system and see how the Genesis system runs with this and um, then move on from there. If it seems like there's another game system out there that maybe uh, enhance this much more, then I would gravitate towards that. But based off of what Lance told me this morning, I got a feeling Genesis is gonna be an excellent, excellent system. Like I said, I have not read it yet. He has, and he um, ranked it up there with Blades in the Dark how Blades in the Dark, uh, that system runs being a story driven system with time counters and everything else, which is really, really cool, which I really encourage you if you have never tried Blades in the Dark, that is a very cool system. It's a dark system though. Um, that's the only, I should say um, trade-off it's an excellent RPG system but it is very dark so if you like them um, that type of um, gaming in a very dark on for boarding world and the odds are always constantly stacked against you then yeah you would like it but from what he told me he says Genesis is all the good points of Blades in the Dark uh, but it doesn't have the dark just that doom and gloom that Blades in the Dark has to where you're locked inside of the city of Duskfall and everything beyond the city is basically controlled by this demonic horde that will destroy you so very interesting things 
Now, something else that um, I had recently picked up and I've um, gotten into, and I am I may do a video on it, I may not. Um, initially, when I first learn a system, um, I like to do that without any distractions and filming and playing when I'm doing a game session, filming it um, can always be an extra added distraction. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see um, how how simple the game system is because my first impression, it seems like a very simple system. Um, and we will find out. But it was something that was recommended to me a couple of times and it's called Mork Borg and this is it right here now let's go over <laughs> first impressions so first impression of this book it's dark it's very dark um it's built in the way I am perceiving it so far, because I got about halfway through reading this last night, um, of a very dismal, dark universe that would be based in our historic medieval times, or um, the dark times, which however you want to refer to that. But there's a cool thing about this book. It has a very strong overtone of occultism. And, um, but don't let that scare you off because it is very interesting how they did this. And whoever put this book together was genius, um, how they did it. So the book starts out and you are reading about the gods that basically rule over this world and each page as you turn it has a I'll just show you a very dark image on it that draws you in but then as you're reading about this you're learning the game system as you move along and in a very cool type of way because at first you don't even realize you're learning the game system um, you see the image and you're kind of like whoa man I mean some of them but then what this is explaining is about the goddess Anthela and uh, as you get into it it explains her backstory and why she is the way she is which explains this image that you see here and so as it explains in the story um, many knights have come to seek her hand in marriage but mm, unfortunately none of them were able to do so before they were slain by her and they say the gulls cry the names of the knights who sought her hand a reminder that suitors and signs of Anthela's age disappear in conjunction. But who listens to a gull? And a Caragus, even gulls freeze in the cold that rolls from the dreams of the countless dreams of her unending youth. So it sets up the overall theme, the story, the background. You can already get a sense in there ageless which means what I'm taking from this she's an immortal and she lives in a kingdom that is built of ice and snow and um, everything is frozen if you will and then but anyways the book moves on from there and all the way down to their tables and how you roll the tables which kind of blew me away they have um the world trembles one can feel its ways sharp and subtle mysterious and clear one by one in inevitable events demand their place and 
so what it's explaining to you in here is that illustrating this the game master rolls a die each dawn a result of one activates one misery the die used is determined by the GM and the group the GM then rolls d66 to determine which misery occurs the same misery will not befall the world twice so you're kind of like okay you um until you move over to here and they list the miseries which look like something out of the bible in psalms and it's just very very cool how they do that because i'm like looking at it when i first looked at it i'm like what is this somebody copy a page out of the bible and slap it up there but then as i'm reading i'm like no these are the miseries in which they're talking about and depending on how you rolled your d66 so if you rolled a three you would be on psalms three and you rolled a four the great shall be made poor and the poor poor still <laughs> so um yeah but the whole book is set up like that as you move through it and you're looking at some of these images that look um very old like out of a old medieval text that you may find um, something like this as a matter of fact as you look closer at it really what it's explaining to you is it tells you a knife does d4 damage a short sword will do d4 damage a warhammer will do d6 damage and a sword will do d6 damage and then it moves on from there so this poor fellow that has been impaled with all these weapons it's explaining to you how much damage each weapon actually does which is cool and um so the the fact that this seems like a very simple rpg system um and i'm gonna have to finish reading through it and actually do a playthrough but my first impression of this book is this is genius uh it really is how they set this up and um if you've ever seen old pictures um from medieval times and history books or any other type of um, source materials out there you know you look at the pictures and it makes you wonder what the heck is actually really going on here and this one for the armor is one of them that really captivated my imagination you can see the two warriors the one on the left is uh, seems like he's smiling a little bit and then you look behind him and you can see the dead villagers on the hill and then behind him there's a man on the gallows there's birds flying over the gallows and then beyond that is what looks like the church but the thing that i'm questioning if you look at the gentleman with the smile on his face it looks like he has what appears to be a diamond and or a crystal above his head so maybe that's just symbolizing that he has more monetary wealth which means he has better armor maybe that could be what that means don't know not too sure on that one um but yeah everything is pretty simple you have four abilities for the entire game system and do what you roll to create your character and everything else is well all in here one little book and I'll do more on this. I'll get into this a little bit more. Mort Borg seems like a pretty cool um, little system. And, you know, the fact that it's the way that it's set up. <laughs> um, is cool. It, it really is. It, it gives you that unsettling feeling of um the occult but at the same time as simplicity of an rpg game which kind of leaves you with the mixed feelings but so the example that it gives you on the back cover says mork borg a doom metal album of a game a spiked flail to the face rules light heavy everything else and i would from what i'm seeing i have to completely agree now 
for those of you watching out there it does say it does have a warning on it it says really not suitable for those under the age of 16 and I can kind of see that um, this is not a book that um, you know this game right here descent I would be very comfortable playing this with my daughter um, there's like really nothing in here that I would have to worry about you know giving her nightmares or anything like that or having to censor or, or even ruin bound would be another one that I would play with my daughter and I bet she would just love it but this game is not one that would no this is um, like I said it's a very very dark game um, there is a lot of occultic images and everything based in here is based off of in my opinion the way I'm looking at it like a medieval occult dark type of atmosphere so hmm. very very cool though and I'll be getting into this more so. Mark Borg, and of course, published by Free League Publishing, which brought us uh, many games, but one of my favorite games now, Forbidden Land, so I expect pretty good things from that. All right, my friends, that's pretty much uh, what's been, uh, in a nutshell, going on lately um, in Artichoke Dips Gaming World. Um, and I the last video I talked about um, kind of a new way I was doing solo RPG with a friend and how we were doing that so I am looking forward to making a video and of course when Trevor he's very busy right now he has a lot of stuff going on that uh, he's trying to get completed um, you know like I said it just seems like once summer comes around everybody's busy they got things going on you know events and I would expect this year to be more so more busier than normal considering everybody's lifting restrictions now the pandemic seems like it's finally come to an end and people can start to get back to um, life as to what we would call a normal life so I got a feeling this summer is gonna be a very busy summer a lot of people are gonna probably be doing a lot of outside activities, family reunions, um, concerts, all kinds of things that um, people have been, uh, you know, doing without for what almost two years now. So, all right, my friends. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, like I said, don't forget if you're new here. Uh, click that subscribe button followed by the bell icon and when I upload a new video you'll get a notification because I don't make a video every single week um, I wish I could if I had the time to be able to do that but um, I make a video when I get time and um, when I get time and I feel as if it's um, video worthy something to really talk about if it, if it seems like you know um, I enjoy my gaming um, and sometimes I like to do my gaming just myself off camera and at other times I'm like okay I'm uh, I'll turn on the camera and I'll make some games and um, get them out there for everybody to see so anyways with that being said my friends this is Artichoke that signing off <laughs>